What's up, everybody? Ryan Sickler here, and I just wanted to let you know that tickets to my fall dates of the Live and Alive tour are on sale now. Go to ryansickler.com, get your tickets to all shows. I'm coming to Austin, Dallas, La Jolla, Salt Lake City, Denver, Chicago, Detroit, Minneapolis, Madison, Portland, Fort Lauderdale, Tampa, and Tempe. Tickets for all shows are available right now on my website at ryansickler.com. The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler. Welcome back to the Honeydew, y'all. We're over here doing it in the Night Pants studio. I am Ryan Sickler, ryansickler.com, and Ryan Sickler on all your social media. And I'm going to start this episode like I start them all by saying thank you. Thank you. Look, for whatever you do in any way you support me, thank you very much. Whether it's this show, whether it's the way back, uh, come see me on tour. Tickets are available on my website at ryansickler.com. Um, or the Patreon. The Patreon, look, I'm very lucky and grateful that you guys support what I do and I'm able to just do this for a living and talking to you regular stories. The Honeydew with y'all is the wildest thing on Patreon. I promise you there's no one that has stories like you guys. It's been $5 a month since we started a few years ago and it's still five bucks a month. It's not getting raised. I want to hear your stories. If you have a story that has to be heard, please submit it to honeydewpodcast at gmail.com. All right? Um, that's the biz. You know what we do here. We highlight low lights, and I always say these are the stories behind the storytellers. I am very excited to have this guest back on the Honeydew. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jody Swinton. Welcome hey, to the Honeydew. Hey, thank you so much for having me back. Thank Ooh, you for coming. And a back. little rhythm section. I appreciate Look, that. Look, I told you, I appreciate you right now. I'm king shit in my house right now. <laughs> I've got a third grader who is can't, you know, sometimes is like, whatever, dad, I'm not right. cool, you know, which no. is fine. Well, you're not going to be cool for that. a very long time. I, look, yeah. I believe that you really like, go ahead and humble me. Like she shits on me in ways like, like when I'm about to go do a show, she'll be like, you're wearing that. I'm like, what's yeah. the matter with this? Oh yeah, yeah. No, my kids are just like third grader. Yeah, they, yeah. They'll I'll be say they'll say something funny. I'm like, huh? You get it from your mom, and they're like, yeah, you're not funny. Yeah, that's yeah. Or, or I say something that is funny, and oh, they're like, that's yeah. so lame. Yeah, like, oh, that's my. what I get. I get no. Cool. Dad. Thanks, guys. Yep, yeah, I get that all the time. But I told you, young you and pretty current you are on my TV. Well, good. And tablets, non. Can stop and well, good. they just the, I'm the king of third grade right now Woo-hoo, at her finally. school because they're all like you <laughs> yeah I waited a long time waited for a this. long time damn yeah it. damn it and they're all like you know Jody Sweet and you know Jody Sweet yeah and then the next question cute. is you know do you know Uncle Jesse I'm like no no I don't know him no. I know Jody but you're it's number true. one I, over well there. I'm like the, the six top, top. like six degrees of John Stamos mm. you know what I mean so. You're the top top. So th- <laughs> well, thank, thank you. you. Absolutely. Thank you. Right now, I reign supreme in my home because of you. Well, at least somebody does because I certainly <laughs> don't in mine. <laughs> we got 16 and 13 year old girls, and no. being me gets me nothing in my house. So yeah. Well, we're gonna dive into all of it. Before we do, please yes. promote everything you'd like. Uh, so you can follow me on Instagram at Jody Sweeten. That's where I post a lot of stuff um, for all of my comedy and movies and all that kind of fun stuff. And and uh, yeah, that's what I got going on right now. Just got back from Canada working for a few weeks. So that's yeah, great. Busy. Yeah. Yeah. I love that you're staying busy. Yeah. Uh, but you're also going through some life changes as <gasps> you're staying yes. busy. And you mentioned it when I was like, what, what should we talk about today? And you're like this. And I was like, you know what? It's a great thing because. We're going to talk about perimenopause. Yes. For a little bit, at least. Well, I, I you and know. Listen, I want to say this. I know we have a predominantly male audience, but I'm telling you 100% you need to know about this as yes. well. Yes. All right? And I am absolutely no expert, but I will. Well, you're an expert on what's going I'm on with you. I'm an expert on what's going on with me. And I will say, like, I'm 42 now. And I am not the person that I was at 35. And it's it's crazy. And you, it started because, you know, we were talking about our kids and stuff like that. And I, I said, you know, I really – the worst of my older daughter, who's now 16, her, like, peak 
just awful hormonal middle school era, like coincided, just perfectly dovetailed with the pandemic. And what I realized in hindsight was that it also really coincided with the start of my like perimenopausal changes. And most people think like, oh, menopause, like you're 55 and you're old and shriveled up. Right, That's right. all I, That's even all, me. Right. Me, me. Let me, it starts. You no longer have a period, you right. get hot flashes That's, and you're irritable. Mm, right. That's menopause. Menopause right. is when it's all it's done. It's also a, right. a top line top of line. menopause. Yeah. Exactly. Not, well, yeah. the crazy thing is, is all the research now, like- they're finally doing research. There has been like no research done on this as usual because, you know, we're women. Um, but chances are if you are a, a dude or or anyone around women in their late 30s, 40s, early 50s. You all. You, you everyone. Um, you are dealing with. Someone who is going through a second puberty that no one has told you is coming. Ooh, a second puberty. That's, That's well said. It is wild. I, I am very fortunate. My um, my OBGYN, Dr. Suzanne Gilbert Lenz, is an expert on this. She's written a book on it, I, which I just bought and I have to read. Um, but nobody tells you that this is coming. And, and it's really f***ed because your kids – are usually teenagers at this time. So they're going through their own like hormonal journey and everyone kind of expects like, oh, they're psychos and they're going through and they just, don't, they can't control themselves. And what no one tells you is that if you are a, 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 a female at this point in your life, you're also going through the most wild hormonal changes of your life, but nobody's telling you that they're going on or warning you that they're coming. So you're just like, I think I've lost it. I like so you. That's is what I want to ask you. What makes you specifically? You noticed it. I. And so instead of just being like, "Well, this is who I am now," what makes you say, "Whoa, this is"? You well, know what I'm saying? Like what, the difference where you're like, "Wow, I, I noticed this." What I me. noticed was uh, in, and it was also you know the pandemic sort of masked a lot, right? Because we were all kind of collectively losing our shit. So it was very hard to be like, oh, that's what's going on. But now that I look back, I'm like, oh no, I started getting really regular migraines like mm. at certain times of in the month. That's a thing too? That is definitely a thing. Um, the change in hormones like affects and you get migraines usually like around the beginning or end of your cycle. Um, and so I started getting those regularly. I was so irritable and I was not one of those women who really ever like noticed big hormonal fly. I was like, eh, yeah, whatever. I, when I tell you I became a complete psycho, I threw a plastic lemon at the wall uh, <laughs> at one point because I got so pissed and my kids now joke about it and they wrote, they call it the angry lemon. And <laughs> it's still in the it's house. It's still in the house. Yeah. It's in a little bowl on the count on the counter and they wrote T-A-L on it and it's towel, the angry lemon. And they, I didn't even know that they had made fun of me about it for like a year. Oh, that's great. And they were like, oh, it's the angry limb. I was like, what? And they were like, look on the bottom of it. And it, they wrote on it. And I was like, what? And they were like, remember when you got so pissed that you just Hilarious. picked up that plastic lemon and threw it at the wall? And I was like, oh, my God. Just shame, right? I was like, oh, I did do that. What? Over like just not, I mean, I'm sure it was a stupid argument at the time and frustrating, whatever. But like I, I'm not – that person. Like, I'm just like, eh, whatever. I find myself reacting to things. I was crying over squirrels the other day. What do you mean? What do you mean? <laughs> okay. Are you like watching them frolic no, around? No, 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 no. Well, I was, uh, okay, so they are, <laughs> see, this is it not be a cry that you're yeah. laughing at. No, I'm just but like, I w I'm not an overly emotional person. My mother will tell you this because she is one and it was a point of contention in our relationship for years. I called her the other day and I was like, I'm just so sad. <laughs> They're cutting down trees in our neighborhood um, and like a nice green space golf course and building a sports thing or whatever. And so the squirrels are all like disrupted in their mm -hmm. homes. And so in our backyard, there were a lot of squirrels and they were fighting. And it really upset me <laughs> that these squirrels were like fighting for space and like that the, this is the world and we just, and I, it was like this whole thing. 
And I I had to call my mom. You're becoming your mom. I, exactly. And I was like, no. And, and it was it was horrifying on so many levels. I called my friend and left a voice note because I was so upset about it. Horrifying <laughs> Just, on so many levels. <laughs> So, meanwhile, oh, like, man. the hilarious part is I was attacked by a squirrel when I was a kid, so I had no love for squirrels for a very long time, and now here Look I am. Look at you now. Yeah. And their habitat loss. And they're out in your backyard fighting with now each other. Now they're in their backyard fighting. Right. Meanwhile, my dog's, here. like, thrilled because it's just raining squirrels, and I'm like, oh, God, they're all dying. Right. It's just... Oh, oh so, my God. So what I'm saying is, is things have changed. I am no longer the person I thought I was. Oh, but God. I, like my depression got really bad at the same time. Like it got to the point where there were days I just couldn't get out of bed. And I hadn't felt like that since I was like probably early recovery or even active addiction. Like, So can that, I ask you, like you're just – you just wake up and you don't, you find yourself not, you don't feel it coming or anything. You just wake up and no, you're like, wow, I, I don't want to get out of bed today. I would wake up and just be like, oh my God, everything's wrong. My anxiety. Mentally as well Mentally, too, all oh, of it. mentally, physically, I get so much more tired. Like the waves of exhaustion and uh, like any woman that has had been pregnant or any person that's been pregnant will tell you that first trimester, that kind of exhaustion, that's what starts mm -hmm. happening again where you're like, I just, I need a nap. And again, nobody warns you of these things. So you just put all of this stuff on yourself that, oh, I'm just failing. Oh, I'm just, I just suck now. Like what I could do five years ago and keep going and like, uh. and also brain fog. You suddenly are like, I think I have dementia. It's you'll you're putting your keys in the freezer. You're can't find your phone. I have ADHD. It's gotten and I got late diagnosed, but it's gotten so much worse. The reason that a lot of women in their 40s are starting to get diagnosed is because it exacerbates all of those symptoms. Mm. So like the forgetfulness, the all of these things start happening to you that make you think I'm just, I, I, I must have dementia. I must be just an angry old lady. I must like, you know, all of this stuff. I just have depression. I have, oh my God, my anxiety. I just can't cope anymore. Once you start reading a little bit about it, you realize all of these things are directly connected and related. And suddenly you're like, oh, I'm not losing my mind. And it really has been like a, a huge shift. And well, also, how many years before you realized this? Oh, it's been the past like five or six years that I just thought all of these things were like separate fires that so I was So this actually putting. went to your late 30s, starting your late 30s. My late then. 30s, yeah, absolutely. Wow. Like during the pandemic 2020, yeah. so it's 24 now, like four mm -hmm. or five years it's been. And you said you're 42? 42, yeah. So yeah, like late, so late like 30s. Late 30s, wow. it definitely started then where I was like, oh, I just react differently or like I just, I'm sort of not that person. And of course the pandemic changed a lot of things for us too and all of that, but I've really started putting the puzzle pieces together and so many women out there are at this same point in their life and doing the same thing and how many women I talk to they're like oh my god I just I just don't have energy anymore or this is happening to me or that and I'm like oh yeah have you read about like perimenopause or this and it's wild and it affects so many women and my husband he's like oh I get it now like He's much more gentle with me. He doesn't take me personally. We we got in an argument, not even an argument, but we don't really bicker or anything over Naked and Afraid, the show. Yeah. What was Neither the argument? Neither one of us have ever watched the show, but I was just in a mood to like, just be like, that's, no, you're wrong. I don't, I'm, I don't know why, but like, I will pick fights and- just things that did not used to be who I was. Things where I'm like, oh, my God, I'm acting like a 14-year-old girl. Okay. So real quick, you said a lot of ladies, moms, mm -hmm. are going through perimenopause and their teens are going through puberty. Yeah. Male or female. Yeah. Looking back on knowing that now, do you think your mom was going through perimenopause while you were a teen? My mom – 
I, my mom was not no. um, for v- various reasons that I know of. Um, but no, she was not. But she, but I know that she still was probably not getting the kind of help or hormone therapy or support that she needed at, for women's health because it just doesn't. We just think no like one cared. no one cares. <laughs> no, one no one cared. Cares I mean, because, I don't, I'm not and, laughing. But no, yes. but I mean, I laugh at it because it's true. No one cared. Uh, no one cared, and sh- there's like just been no research. It was like I don't know. They just like they bleed and then they don't. Like right, you know, this <laughs> yeah. basically they how bleed we for a while. At, they, they get old and they stop. don't. And like that shit's weird. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's basically how we have handled <laughs> yes. women's health. It dries and, up. They get cranky. It's and it, I mean, and, and we're <laughs> laughing at it, but that's it's because mm-hmm. it's been like male dominated and it's they don't have to deal with it so your but now, generation of women yeah are really the first ladies learning about this well the first and, ladies and really, learning about it starting to do research yeah and understanding and the it. generation kind of slightly before us of of female um physicians and researchers are like hey guys there's like half the population that we haven't really checked on I mean, we haven't even done like medical, a lot of um, uh, pharmaceutical research doesn't include women specifically. So, you know, that's a whole other thing. But I talk about it because all of a sudden I'm a 42 year old woman and I didn't give a shit until I started realizing that like, (gasps) yeah, nobody tells you this is coming and it hits you like a fucking train and it, it spills out all over your life. Suddenly you're like, I, I, I can't, I can't do my job. I can't, this is so much. Like I used to be able to handle 9,000 things at once. Mm -hmm. And now I just, I just can't. And I'm like, now that I know what's happening, I try to be a little more patient with myself. But at first I just thought I sucked. I just was like, well, looks like I'm bitten. Put yeah, I'm out get, the I'm getting old and getting it's old slowing and down. Just slowing yeah, down and everything yeah. sucks and I'm a crazy person. It's and also I'm good to know that's my not mother true. And that, yeah. Because now I'm like, oh, there's things I can do about it. Like there's a lot of stuff out there starting to be out there that I can read in, read about and read into. And I'm like, oh, my God. Okay. And talk to my friends about it. And it turns out we're all going through these same symptoms, but we think we're just doing it alone. So like you don't talk about it. And you're like, oh, wait, this is happening to you too? Oh, well, shit. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, and again, if you have to live around women this age, I highly suggest you also talk to them about what's going on and listen to this stuff because they, we feel like we're crazy. Mm-hmm. And it's just, it, we're not. It's just a huge shift that we're going through that no one's really prepared us for. So, and also we're dealing most likely with teenagers who are assholes. Yeah. It's a really terrible converse, uh, combination. And um, I wonder that anyone makes it out alive. I So what are some of the things you can do to help? I, I mean, I, I heard found, you mention hormone therapy, just uh, talking. Is yeah, that something that's... Just, I mean, I have gone back into therapy and I've found that I'm in a place now where I am much more... Um, like I have... I'm more emotional, but I have some perspective on it. Like I'm willing to kind of look at and dig into things that maybe I wasn't 10 years ago. I think you start kind of hitting that point. It's, you know, your quote unquote midlife crisis, but it's your midlife reflection point. You start going like, Oh well, shit! I was well, like, if you're the about same person that you through, were at twenty, or th- you're just you're a piece of you're, shit. Well, you're not if you're growing. the same, right? Then <laughs> then not, I yeah. feel really right. sorry yeah. for you, exactly, because you're not gonna have any friends. Because uh, yeah. like we said, it's great to hang out with twenty five year olds when you're twenty five. That's it, bro. And you think you're twenty, but you're like, I'm young, I'm cool. Then you go around and you're like, I'm, I can't. I'm old and I'm so not yep. cool, and I'm really happy about I'm that. I'm good with dinner at six. <laughs> Yeah. Give me the early bird special. Yeah. Days are warmer, the walks are longer, and one easy way to help your dog shine this season is with fresh, healthy food from the farmer's dog. The farmer's dog makes real fresh dog food and delivers it right to your door. Recipes are developed by vet nutritionists. They're made from real meat and veggies, and they're portioned just for your dog. Traditional dry and wet dog food options are highly processed. They can use much lower quality ingredients. I know, girl. Turn your head for that. Then they claim to, and they are difficult to portion accurately. All right, this little lady right here, this is Princess Lily Rose. 
Loves the farmer's dog. All right. She's tearing it up. She comes to the studio now just looking for it all the time. And uh, yeah, man, her, look at this coat. Look at the coat on this girl. This is a Blenheim. This is a Blenheim, Blenheim Cavalier King Charles Spaniel, y'all. Beautiful. Trust it to the farmer's dog. Doesn't matter if your dog is young or old. It's always the right time to begin investing in their health. That means more happy, healthy, and full years together. Get 50% off your first box of fresh, healthy food at thefarmersdog.com slash honeydew. Plus, get free shipping. Just go to thefarmersdog.com slash honeydew to get 50% off. That's thefarmersdog.com slash honeydew. Whether you're off to the pool, hiking, or traveling this summer, you're bringing your microbiome with you too. The 38 trillion bacteria that live in and on you, especially your gut, are essential to whole body health. Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic benefits your gut, skin, and heart health in just two capsules a day. Nowadays, I'm being more conscious of what I'm putting in my body. I'm trying to avoid things like synthetic ingredients and chemicals, which is why I like Seed. They sent me a whole package. I'm using it right now. Your gut is a central hub for various pathways through the body, and a healthy gut microbiome means benefits for digestion, skin health, heart health, your immune system, and much more. Your body is an ecosystem, and great whole body health starts in the gut. Support your gut this summer with Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic, Go to seed.com slash honeydew and use code 25honeydew to get 25% off your first month. That's 25% off your first month of Seed's DSO-1 Daily Symbiotic at seed.com slash honeydew, code 25honeydew. With all the drinks out there, you want hydration that works. Liquid IV delivers extraordinary hydration with advanced science thanks to Liquid IV HydraScience, an optimized ratio of electrolytes, vitamins, and nutrients. We've been rocking with Liquid IV since day one. We've been using it here at the studio for years. I've got a couple in my bag when I travel. I pour a bottle before I take Prince House out for a walk. I use them at my workouts. It's so we, you take them anywhere. It's the easiest thing to do for your hydration. It's one stick of Liquid IV delivers super hydration to water alone with three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients. It's hydration for endurance, mental clarity, and overall well-being. Turn your ordinary water into extraordinary hydration with Liquid IV. Get 20% off your first order of Liquid IV when you go to liquidiv.com and use code HONEYDO at checkout. That's 20% off your first order when you shop Better Hydration today using promo code HONEYDO at liquidiv.com. Now, let's get back to the dip. Um, but yeah, it, you know, one of the things that I've also found is meditation and learning to say no. Like boundaries, boundaries. That's a big deal. It's a really big deal. It's a huge deal for for um, women and females in particular. We we overextend ourselves a lot in the emotional welfare of everyone around us. And you're it, like going through all of this stuff and you feel like your usual habit of putting yourself behind everyone else just isn't working anymore. Like. All of a sudden, you're like, I need to, I need to take care of me, or I'm gonna burn this whole fucking house. Isn't down. <laughs> it interesting that we're because I'm the same way. I'll caretake everybody, right? And then you're like, oh man, I'm forgetting about me. Forgetting about me, yeah. And and it's you know even just sitting There's none for like, of that without a healthy you. None of it, and I like I learned, you know, and, and kids are demanding, and teenagers especially. They they are. They, you know, my, at least my kids, I know they win sometimes just by purely wearing me down because now I am tired at 7 p.m. <laughs> and yeah. so they're like, hey, mom, mom, I want to go do, mom, come on, just mom, mom, please, mom. But so-and-so pick me up, mom, come on. Please. And you're like, you know what? I just, I just want to go to bed. Okay, fine. Great. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, and I've learned that like stopping and being like, you know what? Give me a minute. And it also then I don't come into conflict because then I'm not getting frustrated at them. I'm like, mm -hmm. I've taken a little space for myself. Like little things like that where I just had to kind of redo how quickly I respond to things and how quickly I demand that response of myself. Like that's been key because I 
demand things of myself that I wouldn't other of other people. And it's not, it's not helpful. I think it's great to self check like that. Yeah. It's also self awareness too. Like I say, a lot of people just would succumb to like, as I'm just getting older and it's like, well, hold on a second here. I like that there's a mindset that's like, well, let's check this shit out here. Cause, well, Cause next is menopause. Right. And then so what the well, hell happens then? Then everything gets better. Does it really? It, yeah, that's so. I mean, I I don't I don't know yet, but <laughs> that's what I keep reading is that basically <laughs> what what's, so because menopause just means menopause. Once you've hit menopause, it means you haven't had a period for a year, and then and basically you're done with that part of your life. That then you've entered menopause. But how does that change your body? Well, then your hormone levels kind of regulate they again. Out. They kind of, oh. I mean, you have like less estrogen and the, you know, whatever. There's some stuff. There's definitely things that happen there, but you, it's not the like, from what I hear, the crazy time of that lead up to it where everything's changing. Sort of like the lead up to like hitting puberty in the first mm. place and everyone's, you know, crazy. I have a middle schooler right now. Middle schoolers are insane. They're not right up here yeah, yeah and we hit a second one of those and it you feel it i can tell you i it's funny you say middle school because seventh grade mm. i felt it all that's when my whole world shifted mine specifically my kids, seventh grade seventh grade everything is, i became i felt like i became aware so much more aware seventh grade is it's such a hard like I look at seventh graders and I'm just like, mm, bless your little heart. You're just fucking crazy yeah. and you don't even yeah. know it. You know, like they're just yeah. – and like, God, you and then you're the worst and you don't even know it. And and it's – I have such great empathy for seventh graders now uh, watching my kids having gone through it and remembering what it was like for me at that age. Like, oh. It is. It's rough. It's rough. And but timing wise, I'm looking back on myself now like, oh, yeah, seventh grade was sort of that prepubescent for sure. Yeah. Period where you're just you're a mess. You're and either fucking or fighting. You. you know what I mean? You're like, literally, that's what you're doing. That's you're it. It, it's it, oh, and that's sometimes it. both like you can't you don't know what's wrong and you're no, crying probably yeah, during yeah. all of it. <laughs> Like, right, it's just like, <laughs> I mean, that, that is an apt description of what puberty is. Yeah. It's just fucking fighting and crying during all of it. Like, that's just, that. like, because you're, you don't know which way is up. Like, yeah. you really don't. And, and it, like, it, I, it kind of makes me a little bit teary when I think, because I've just watched my kids go through it. Mm -hmm. And the, the hardest thing is like, no matter how much you watch them go through it and how much you go, oh my God, that's right. Uh, like you can't save them Nothing. from it you or just fix gotta it. Go. Yeah. You yeah. know, my my older daughter just had her first heartbreak and like called me from school and was like, You have to pick me up. And I was like, Maybe oh, I can't. I yeah. can't because tomorrow you're gonna have to go to school. And you're gonna like it, you're this is and she was like, You hate me, you don't love me, and just so you know, you fucking don't care about my mental health. I was like, No, but I I love you so much that I have to sit here and watch you go through some pain that I know is just normal life stuff. And like, ugh. Mm -hmm. but I try and give myself that same empathy to be like, oh, you're, you're a little touchy right now too. <laughs> like be gentle with yourself. Um, and I think that's, that's kind of where I'm at in life right now is this idea of like being gentle with myself. And it started as like this journey of, oh, I'm just really dealing with pandemic and kids and anxiety and depression. But really, I'm like, oh, no, it's it's kind of all of it. And yeah. so, like, just be gentle with yourself. I mean, normal life is wild enough. You throw a two-year pandemic in the mix and or a year and a half, whatever, and then right. you really don't – you can't judge anything because now you're looking at it through that filter like, well, right. I started doing more of this or less of that. Well, it's the pandemic. Right. Everything yeah. shifted and, and you know, and then, like – you know, going through crazy health stuff, like all the, like life happens. And I just am tr at this point where I'm like, you know, maybe, maybe I can't do 10,000 things like I could before. And that's okay. So like trying to not 
force myself and shoehorn myself into being that person that I was before. But like, how do I adapt to this new way of being and treat myself a little more gently Mm -hmm. at the same time, you know? And so what are you doing that's different now that you say, you know, we grow older, you change that hopefully for the better, right? I what mean, do you do these days that you wouldn't do before? Oh, gosh. Uh, stay in on a Friday or a Saturday night. Mm-hmm. I am so happy at home. Um, and again, I, you know, with, I remember during the pandemic, we all just were like, please get me out of this house. But really, over a period of time, I've learned just to be a little more content with my own company. And I've really settled into that in the last few years where I'm like, oh, no, like it's okay to just slow down and read a book or like not go engage with all of the craziness out in the world. Um, but I did I, – I, when I was young, I – did not plan on becoming that person. I would have rather been dead. Like, if you would have asked me at 25, like, hey, do you think you'll like, you know, hit Tell a restaurant me. at 6 p.m. <laughs> yeah. and be in bed by nine like, reading yeah, a book a or doing a crossword? I'll be like, uh, yeah, if I come back, if I've died and come back as an old, like 95 year old lady, sure. Yeah. But never in my wildest dreams did I plan on <clears throat> on being a person that was content with like, a little quiet in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and now I find that like I need both. You know, I like to go out and do stuff, but I definitely need that recharge. I mean, I'm fortunate that I get to go do stand up. Come see me on tour. Tickets are available on my website at ryansickler.com. But um, like I'm not, I've never been, I had friends that would go to clubs nonstop. I, I and, have friends like that in the, in the, in the, in the my scene 20s. too. And once in a blue moon, I'd go and we would, they would stand. At a tape, I'm like, that's what you do all night. Nine, we got yeah. here at nine o'clock. Clock, yeah. You're going <laughs> like to stand six hours. <laughs> for five hours here and, right. and kind of try to pick up a girl or two here and there. Like, right. And if not, just point out the ones that you think are like, this right, is right. what you guys do. Right. Like, yeah. I'm like, you could just drink this beer at home and right, do this. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, for real. And I've never felt like. I've never been a club guy. Like I've never had a club shirt. I've never been that guy. Not you a never dancer. Been the night at the, no, no, never the night yeah. at the rock. See, I was. Club. I was definitely I was never the, that. I inflicted myself upon the world when I was young. But the job <laughs> that I have, we have, allows me to be among the people on the weekend who are drinking, having a good right. time. So I feel like that quota gets met. Yeah. And then during the week, I just want to go home yeah. and get the fuck away from everything. Plus, but I was never like anything that Anything past midnight these days? Oh. Tomorrow? Oh, God. You mean tomorrow? <laughs> I'm like, wait, yeah. well, a.m.? Yeah. Like the middle, like the yeah. dark one? Yeah. In the middle of the, the night? Yo. The yeah, dark it is. The, like, it is. <laughs> I, it is, a, and I, I will, I, I, I laugh because I'm Great. like, I never used to see this side of the sunrise. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm. It was like the sun coming up was like, like the end of the day for me. Going out and at 11, I'm like, starting Ooh, my it's night at 11. Like a nice, bright, crisp morning. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong yep. with me? But it's, it, it is, I've shifted so this true. whole perspective of life. Um, and I don't, I, I like, I don't care what people think of me anymore. I don't. I'm Isn't wearing. So I am wearing though. rainbow Lego earrings. I don't care. I love them. They look great. You know, I was like, thinking. I when, love who I am. Didn't yeah. have that for my first puberty. Didn't love who I am. Me Second either. one, kind of a psychotic bitch Me, sometimes, I but know. I really am liking who I'm becoming. <laughs> I um. You were talking about seventh graders, and oh. I was thinking that like everything was such a big deal to you that my yeah. pants. What they're gonna make fun of my shoes or my top or my and that was your because whole they would. fucking because world. They would. Because they would. Because they would. Because because they're evil. Yeah, they, are they are so they're mean. Shit. They yeah. are so fucking mean. My kids, I'm like, oh, you guys, they they will read the filth better than a drag queen on any day. Like they will zero in on your soul and be like, and that. And you're like, oh. Oh my God, you just, that's awful, <laughs> but very clever. But oh my God. Yeah, I do right. I like, you guys say that? Yeah, yeah. That's good, but don't uh, say that and shit. And as long as it's funny, I'll let it slide. But it, it just, they're mean and, and it's because they're all so afraid. 
And you're so wrapped up in self and like, oh, it's How exhausting. freeing now, though. It's so great. To not give a rat's ass. I don't ass. give a shit. Nope. I don't. If I we're dance running in the late, I'm going to school, store. dropping her off with my hood up because my hair is all over the place. I, got my, I don't give a will rat. Roll you on time? In, She's on time. Yeah, yeah. I will roll in my PJs. <laughs> yeah. It, like, I was running the other day because my kid left her backpack in the car, right? I said, Mom, I need it. So I pulled over down the street running in my slippers and no bra, just <laughs> in the morning, right? Like, I got your backpack. <laughs> it's just like a fucking crazy person. I fling a slipper <laughs> off as I'm, <laughs> as I'm running down the sidewalk. One goes this way. I almost fall down. I got, you know. And meanwhile, my kid's just like, oh, oh my fucking oh my God. God. <laughs> what are you doing? And I'm like, I have your backpack. You know, it's just, like, I don't care. I'm like, just fuck you little seventh graders. Yeah. I live through you people. Yeah, you know, that's like right. it's like that's right. it's you, Enough, you sometime, you me. know what? Yeah. You'll you'll yeah. get to be this lady yeah. someday too, and you won't care. You just wait. Right. Damn. And and it's just it is a relief, but it's also so painful to watch your kids go through it. Cause you don't you don't get to be on the other side of it till you go through it. Yeah, you really don't. And yeah. look how long it takes us to even appreciate it. They're just in they're in it. They're in it. And they're everything it. is a big deal because you've never done any of it before. Like heartbreak is awful. You've never felt this. You this might be the thing that kills you. It feels like it might. Man. <laughs> everything you couldn't is, tell me anything no, when I was heartbroken. And like It'll I, be – there's plenty of fish and all that. You're like, does it mean, No, there's not. No, there's yeah, – I'm going no, to die not. alone now. It's over Forever. Now. We had yeah. our kids named. We knew where <laughs> we, we were, were going. Get... We had we, – like, we knew everything. Yeah. You don't even understand. Right. All right, we'll get some sleep. You got science right. in the yeah, morning. Right, yeah, you're like, great, just study for your dad. <laughs> yeah. Right, because we're just like, dude, you have no idea <laughs> yeah. what the, how the world is going to just, like, stomp on your soul. <laughs> this is nothing. <laughs> But I try and remember that, like, they don't know what's in store for them yet. So, like, don't blow it. You know what I mean? Just be like, yeah, this is the worst it's ever going to be. You know, I like to be tell like, my oh. daughter, like, hey, you know what? You know how all those kids make fun of you and you guys make fun of them? Right. We had that, too. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the internet came out. That's and the then thing is, it's... They just started raining shit on it top just, of it, it's, yeah. That's the thing is, like, I'm it like, does break my heart because these kids are dealing with these feelings that feel so permanent and now mm -hmm. they're dealing with them all the time. Like there's no off there's switch. No there's no walking switch. away nope. from it. And it sucks. It fucking sucks. I would not want to be a young person in it. Like now you can Photoshop stuff. You can, you can do anything you want. There's AI, just, fake it. it. Every, everything's yeah. fake. And, and like it, how awful. I feel awful for these kids growing up like that. But I also like I try and remember that so much of the heartbreak and the pain and that awful shit that you want to save your kids from is exactly what, what like you have to experience. And so watching them like from afar and being like, oh no, uh -uh. okay, you're gonna be fine. You know, it's yeah. like when they first start walking or they're at the playground, you're yeah. like, no, that's great, run. Yeah. Oh no, your head's way too far in front of your body. You know, it's just scarier because now they're doing it while driving a car. My daughter drove to school today. Today? Yeah. I mean, not by herself. I was right. in the car, but still, we're in that phase, so it's a lot. She's 15 then, learns 16. from it. She's 16. Mm -hmm. And getting her hours in right now. Getting her hours in, doing her uh, doing her behind the wheel training, you know, through How's like she AAA. Do? She's doing great. That's She's good. actually a really good driver. I'm shocked. Yeah? Uh, I mean, at least when I'm in the car, God only knows what will happen once she has her, her actual license. But um, no, she's she's responsible and seems to be like paying attention and she really watches everything going on. So I, and I'm also not the parent that's like, you know, gripping the oh shit handle in the yeah. car as they're driving. I'm like, no, you're doing great. You know, cause I know that makes her more calm. Mm -hmm. She doesn't need me stressing out in the passenger seat. So now with perimenopause, next is menopause. <sighs> And then I'll be done. Then I can just throw my uterus up against the wall. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> just fucking take it. Yeah. yeah. How long? So perimenopause, you said before. It's, I, it can be like 
two to ten this years. This is what you said out there before we record. It can really yeah. be that long. It can be. It can be. A, so you like can be lucky years. and get a get in and out. You can quick. get in and out. Some women are community like, college. It. So, you can community, some community college. Got, it. Some women are like, I didn't even notice anything. And just oh shit, it's gone. Like, and some women are like, I've been through hell <laughs> yeah. for ten years. You know, ten years. It, it could like. Like anything, you know, your body doesn't just flip a switch. It's sort of recalibrating itself over a period of time. So, like, I'm kind of like, okay, now I have to learn how to work with this. And luckily I have amazing – I have so many incredible – um like my my OBGYN, like I said, she's this incredible, um, like, holistic. She does Ayurvedic medicine too. So she's not – she does Western regular old medicine, but then she also has like incorporates all different kinds of herbal practices and things like that that have really been shown to be helpful during this stuff. And like she's like, why can't we use both? Why don't we use like, yeah. throw everything we've got at it? Acupuncture is something I started doing that I love really helped. That oh my god, help. it helped so much. Um, it just like. Meditation, again, like the little lifestyle changes, adding in a couple supplements, iron, all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I don't look like someone's just like kicking me randomly in my sleep when I wake up in the morning. I'm like, I'm like bruise, like, are, is, are you just hitting me with a stick while I sleep, babe? What are you doing? That's also common. You just start, your body just doesn't, like you, your iron levels drop. Oh, nobody told me that. So like just little things that, I've learned from so many of my great like doctors and women who have been going through this. And it's like, why aren't we talking about this more? Literally yeah. everyone is affected by women in their life going through this. And also it's when breast cancer rates go up and when, you know, all of this oh, stuff. Is that right? Yeah, like cervical cancer, all of this stuff, as your hormones start shifting, like those things all start going up too. So it's you got to start just paying more attention to yourself than you did in your 20s and 30s when you were like, eh, it's fine. And that leg will reattach itself. You know, yeah, like, yeah. It, all of a sudden you're like, oh, I am actually a delicate little flower and I, I need, you God, know. God, we are fragile. Yeah. We're just complicated houseplants. So let me ask you this. and Maybe you don't have an answer. I don't know. But how do you educate the men in your life or your children in your life about this? And how do you to deal with mom so they don't just say, mom, you're being a bitch. Right. I mean, they do still say that. <laughs> and, then I, and then I punch them right in their face. No, I don't do it. Um, no, I, I, you know, I, one thing I've always been very open and like honest about is um, like bodies, physicality, like what you're experiencing in your life are how, like there's nothing that's off limits to talk about. So I'll be like, oh my God, I'm, I'm having a hot flash. You know, like just, just call it out, it. Yep. say it. Like mm -hmm. it's, I think also as women we're taught, you know, this is that point in our life when it's like, oh, and now nobody wants you. Now bye. Mm. You're, now you become invisible. Out to the pasture with right. you. Right. And you know, my friend Paulina Portskova, the, who was the model. And, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. She and I did a, a show together. We were bunk mates out in the jungles of Canada, uh, of Canada, of um, Panama together. And I love her. And she has written, a, a, she wrote a whole book about it. And she is really a huge advocate about talking about what happens as women get older and all of a sudden, like, nobody really counts you know, they're like oh they're invisible now and, and like she was a model this and she was a model right made and like a living at this but she is was she married to rick O'Casey? yes she was cars, married to rick right? yeah, yeah yeah there was and that was a whole thing um but she is brilliant she is a, an incredible writer and author and she's so smart she has uh she's incredibly incredibly well educated on politics and feminist issues all kinds of stuff and she was talking about that, like, all her life, though, she was pretty. So nobody, you know, and now she's like, now I get to be me. Yeah. Because now all of a sudden people, that's not the focus. And it's this real sense of, like, kind of reclaiming yourself. I think that women, it's our version of, like, you know, going and buying a Corvette. All of a sudden we're like, wait a minute. I've done all this shit for everybody else. <laughs> like, and you, you'll see women in their 40s start kind of going, I, I'm going on a girl's weekend. Bye. Yeah. Bye. I got to go because all of a sudden we start realizing our place in the world is shifting. And like, I got to do some stuff for me so that I can continue to like take care of people around me. But it takes older women and people that have been through it and talking about it with 
our partners, with men in our lives, with our, you know, like our brothers, our friends being like, this shit is going on. And my husband is so understanding and like, I'll send him stupid reels from Instagram or different books yeah. or whatever. And he pays They're attention. Listening. This shit's going to be popping up but he, all of dude, my he, feed. But yeah. he pays attention and he reads and he's like, oh, he he listens. And, you know, he'll know when I'm like just be. And he's like, it's okay. Like, he doesn't try and be like, this is stupid or not happening. Because that's what happens to so many women is they're like, oh, this is just in your head. Like, you you're just overreacting, which don't ever say that. That's don't ever, what, don't like, ever say that. Listen, don't ever um, say particularly that. to a woman in their forties. Don't, just don't ever say it in general, yeah. but uh, we will stab you. Uh, <laughs> don't, don't and try we, don't, we are don't not here to play. It. Yeah. We don't care. Send us to jail. What do we got? It doesn't matter. We can, no one will ask us for shit. Great. Right. Yeah. No, I'm not saying that it is not great, obviously, but yeah, I, you know, that's like it, it, it really just, we need to start talking about like how people change as you get older and like there's nothing wrong with it and that you, it's not about like, oh, I'm not who I used to be. It's like, okay, like now I'm a different version of right. that person. And so maybe I'm a little crankier or, or, you know, whatever. Like, so fucking what? I like me more now. That's so. the important part right That's there. the thing is it's really this is also a period in my life when I'm like, oh, I, I'm learning to like, like Paulina talked about, really like me, this version of me, the me that wears, you know, rainbow Lego earrings and mm -hmm. builds a, you know, Lego plant on a Friday night and listens to a science podcast and is so fucking happy because that was what seventh grade me wanted to do and was so terrified of not being cool or okay that like... I missed out on yeah. a lot of like moments that would have just been peaceful for me because well, I was chasing. You too. Yeah, I mean, yeah. God, in your life growing up too is so wild and different than yeah. most people. Yeah. So I, you know, I, I, and also going back to some of the things that I did enjoy as a kid, as a young person, like going back to some of those things and being like, oh yeah, it's nice to find that person again. Yeah, you Legos know? are timeless too. I'm a I'm a Lego nerd. I'm a huge Lego nerd. Uh, my like husband that's actually one place you could go into a store as an adult by yourself and was, nobody would question you, why this adult's in a Lego store. I will go to the Lego store for hours. I'm a Lego rewards member. Um, <laughs> I, what do you mean you go sit and play in the store? You no, put no, no, stuff together. No, I mean, no, I mean I buy so many that I get points because no, but I get, mean you say you'll go for hours. You're just oh, shopping. I will go and shop. I will go. I look online. I don't know where I'm putting all these fucking Legos. I actually want to figure out a way to like donate them or do something and like because i'm like yeah I know you could do, but i'm like but i don't want to take them apart yeah it's a whole thing all i'm saying is if you find legos in your 40s be warned it's an expensive habit um but yeah i just i'm trying to like enjoy this new part of my life mm -hmm. and also create in it and like I have a new voice and a different voice. So I'm writing and directing and yeah, doing and comedy changing. and do, you know. Yeah, you're doing all of that. so much. It, it's just, it's a really fun time of life, weirdly. Like there's a lot of shifting and changing, but I'm also like, huh, I think whatever is on the other side of this is um, an, another level of freedom and enjoyment of who I am. Good for you, Jody Sweden. Th thank you for doing this. Thank you for coming on and talking about all this. I was so excited this. to come and see you and talk to you. It had been a while, and You're I just best. I love talking to you. We have fun. Um, please promote whatever you'd like again one yeah, more time. Absolutely, you can follow me uh, on Instagram uh, at Jody Sweeten. You can also check out my podcast, uh, How Rude Podcast. It's how uh, at How Rude Podcast on Instagram. It's How Rude Tanneritos, Andrew Barber, and I doing a full house rewatch podcast watching oh, the nice. original episodes um because we've never watched the show is that right yeah so i'm i'm gonna been, tell my daughter that tonight it's She's really fun like, and we keep we it's keep it pretty pg-13 on that one um so you can watch uh on or you can what's it uh, called again uh how rude tanneritos we combined our catchphrases um, but I've been doing that. And then I have family dinner at the Bourbon Room on June 19th. Uh, and you can buy tickets at bourbonroomhollywood.com or you can check out my link tree and I have them on there too. Awesome. Thank you for Absolutely. real. Absolutely. Always. Um, as always, Ryan Sickler on all your social media. Come see me on tour. Tickets are on my website at ryansickler.com. We'll talk to you all next week. Mm -hmm.